here is a view of how the room looks right now. You can hear my chickens in the background. So currently I have like grow lights over here, all over here. And then over here is like a new shelf. So I don't have any grow lights, but it has some good lighting. And these are all just like plants I need to rescue. <laughs> and then I have like high humidity uh, plants here with also no drainage plants. And then here today we are going to make a terrarium for my begonias. And then this is like my Hoya shelf. <laughs> I need to fix these lights. I got, these are the Barina lights. If y'all could see, let me see if I could sh show y'all. Those are the type of Barina lights I got. They do the job. They're pretty good. <laughs> They're just tilted. So I need them to be like this. As you can see, this is good. And then this is different. So it's just, I tied them wrong. So, but I'll fix that. And then I need to like fix all of this in here to in the closet. And then I am going to clean up in here a little bit, as you can see. And then we have some Hoyas and other plants to propagate. So I hope y'all enjoy that. And I'll just be like chatting along, hanging out, very cozy. So grab yourself a little cozy beverage. Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Blue Phoenix. My pronouns are she, her. Welcome. So today I'm going to film a daily plant care uh, video. So this is what I do on the, on the daily uh, basis on how I care for my plants, um, how I wake up and I just like to take care of them and uh, the chickens and also my special little dog. So definitely come along with me as I care for the plants. And I want to just really quickly say thank you all to my new subscribers and also for people joining me on my Twitch streams. That's super cool of y'all. Like I really appreciate all the support you all are giving in all ways for all ways possible. So thank you so much and let's get on to the video. Okay, so this is my little area where I usually like keep like all my books and I really want to show you this because like um, this is like how I like learn about a lot of like about about like a lot of like my plants and stuff like that and how I've improved my plant care along the way so maybe these are good, like good books for y'all to like pick up eventually and like look through and stuff if you want me to like do chapters videos on it I'll do it on my first channel so let me know so that way we and it's like linked already on my homepage for my YouTube page but these are like some really good books you should always definitely keep around in my opinion i'm also going to be doing like classes um at um a local nonprofit. so i'll be doing that this year more classes with diy DIY classes and things like that um but these are like the books that we'll be talking about so i'm gonna see <clears throat> so I'm, i'll probably like for the classes, I'll try to find, <laughs> let me try to find. So I'll probably like link them or something like that for y'all like look through so that way y'all can see. Um, this one's really good about plant propagation. This one is by the National Home Garden Gardening Club. This, this is the two good plant propagation book. So definitely like look for this um, if you can. This has helped me out a lot. I think there's like a chapter I was like, I marked. Oh yeah, see, begonias. So like this one taught me a lot about how, how to like propagate begonias better. So this is what I would do and learn and figure out because it really like uh, uh, goes through everything. So like in here it has a chapter of begonias of perennials and it talks talks to you about division seeds cuttings step by step and then also different ones and and it goes on from a through z so i think as you see so it's like a really good book for you, for people to like look through and um learn more about what they want to do and how to grow their like plants there's grafting 
that's definitely like something that's new that I want to like explore and stuff just to kind of like have fun with. Um, I love plants and I love like showing them to people in new ways if I can. So, oh, and then this this one's really cool. This one's the Encyclopedia of Herbs and Spices and Flavoring. So this is kind of does a little bit with like cooking and stuff like that, but it's really talks to you about like cooking with pepper, black and white pepper. And so I think this is a really good like book if you want to get into like cooking and stuff like that and like learn more about like the flavor profiles uh, on herbs and spices. Um, this one is by Elizabeth Lambert Ortiz. Like I said, I'll make sure I uh, write everything down in the description so y'all can like check those out. Oh, this one's really cool. Uh, I think everybody really knows him a lot, is by uh, Hilton Carter, Walt Creations. So this one's a really good inspiring de like book. Um, it shows you how to be, uh, how to like make propagation uh, stations and stuff like that. And then also like various other ways of like how to do cuttings as bouquets. And so it's like very inspirational in that way on how to design your plants. <clears throat> this one I'm really excited about because I'm going to be doing this a lot on my channel this coming year. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be like just like doing body care recipes with y'all so like let's bring back like old school youtube and that's what i kind of like want to bring back on my channel old school youtube and like i'm trying out this like body care recipe so this one's by stephanie twirls um this was these are recipes by a doctor so she's like she has a lot of like in-depth um, knowledge in here. Okay, Stephanie Tools is a licensed holistic esthetician certified aromatherapist and the author of seven books on natural body care and wellness, including natural healthy skin, natural foot care, and so many more. So this one's really cool. I picked it up in Barnes and Nobles. Barnes & Noble's Half Price. I bought, I picked it up at Half Price Bookstores. So this one's the one that we'll be doing uh, like throughout the year. I'll be working on like body care recipes to show y'all like face moisturizers and exfoliants, facial scrubs and stuff like that that I wanna just try out because <clears throat> Blue Lotus Gardens is not just your local plant shop. And I've said that from like day one. Uh, we are working on so many different things, but I want to take it slow and kind of like bring you all along, along the ride. You know, it's kind of like you all are seeing the big development of it all. So I am just excited and there's so much more that like I'm doing and like talking and I hope you all are just really excited as I am. So next is Houseplants, this little vintage book. <laughs> It's edited by Roger Grounds Barons. It's houseplants. It just talks to you about houseplant care um, from like like houseplant specialties, houseplant propagation. So it's like good to like reflect on these kind of things, health and disease and diseases and disorders. So that's a really this is really good that way. It has helped me out how to like identify. Um, problems and plants and so that way I know how to like go about it and not like just worry so much because the more I worry the more I'm going to like damage the plant that's what I've learned <laughs> and then also this one right here this one's a really really good one um this one is the greenhouse expert by Dr. DG Hesion this one's the one I've been talking to everyone about since like the beginning I've started like my YouTube uh, channels <clears throat> because I had a greenhouse, a larger greenhouse and stuff like that and we would do like greenhouse tasks, right? So things like this and, uh, and so it talks to you about like ornamental cacti and then um,
various plants. It talks to you about like what to do within the months of your of uh for your greenhouse. So like for January, you want to do your general task, which would be like maintain a minimum temperature of four to forty two to forty five in the cool greenhouse. If frost sensitive plants are present in a cold house, it would be necessary to cover such specimens with matting, straw, or newspaper. If night frost is forecasted do not aim for high temperatures 55 to 60 during the day is high enough so this is how like i know like a lot of like my plant knowledge and stuff like that <clears throat> so i will definitely like make sure i write those down on the description down below so that way eventually you all can uh look into those as well i think that's it's a great these are great books for people to like that are starting off or just even like any kind of like uh, level of like plant knowledge, <laughs> it's always good to like learn more. Is what is what I, what I say. So like I have all these like substrates right here that I'm trying to like use and stuff. This is what I'll be using for the um, what's it called <laughs> for the uh, begonia terrarium that we'll be making. I'll have these in case I need them. So that way I won't have like so many around. I can clean these. I actually like save these and reuse them again. Now that they that, that I removed everything, I'm going to clean them with the shelving and then organize it a little bit better. Let me show y'all. I think it looks so much better. Oh, much more clean and organized. 
as you can see I have like my substrates cleaning stuff and then also fertilizers here and then I have like my extra propagation area over there that I'm going to find a spot eventually or I'm just going to like I don't know do something with it <laughs> and then over here I have like all my bucks as you can see and then here I have like miscellaneous items that I really need all the time and so I need them all to be like one little box <laughs> they're not organized but eventually I'll like find little cardboards box cardboard uh, like things and kind of make them into like little boxes for them and then um, my tape key pack like packing supplies also and then over here I have like my uh, electrolytes for my chickens and then also uh, planters planters that I use to repot and then little soft substrates over here so that's what I have it looks so much better this is like my thing that I take always to the events makes it easier just you know scan there and you can pay also Okay, next. Next, I have to like take everything down and then wipe everything down and then uh, water everything and then start propagating plants. Set those aside to callus and then we'll start on the, um, the, Begonia terrarium. I'm really excited to like actually get that going because then I can like work on that and then grow plant grow begonias in there only and then propagate from there <laughs> As you see it gets really good lighting So I don't have a grow light on here, but I am going to eventually get a grow light over here But this is one that I have in my shop It's the philodendron by Pilifolium. I think it's really pretty but it's not selling <laughs> so if it doesn't sell this like plastic cell i'm just going to like chop it up sometimes that works a little bit better because then like after that uh, it becomes a little bit you know easier on the price and stuff like that on certain plants so and they're like Kind of like established or something. Well, this is my one of my new favorites. This is the Aplysium. I think this one's the Silver Streak. Super pretty. So as you can see, it's like really leggy and stuff. So I just need to propagate this one, and then we'll get to that. Here's some soil. Fortunately, these plants didn't make it, so. And this is the Monstera Lechleriana. I'm glad it's still alive. It's got water and everything. <sighs> Poor golden pothos. This one is the Painted Lady. Cuttings. Edisonia. Look at this pot. Isn't this pot cool? These pots are cool. I got these from uh, local artists that hand make that, that hand paint their pots. So I think that's so cool. This is the the black maranta that's on my website. Look how big it is. But I also think maybe the price is not like something that people like so I might just split it and that way it just comes down in price so that's what I usually do sometimes if the if I notice that the plant is a little too high but it's already really well established as you see pink princess <laughs> have the white and pink princess and then I have the white knight also 
So I want to collect like eventually collect the royal collection. So the pink princess, the white princess, the knight, the all the all the other ones. This one's my Hoya Treviana. Oh look, it's growing! Yay! I love this one. This one's so cool. I gotta get a new pot for that. This one's a variegated domestic home, but it like never variegated. This one's that was like the saddest one. I always do that. But yeah, no variegation. I did learn like in TC, you can like do stuff with when you're like growing it out to actually like promote better variegation to it. So I was, I don't know, it's something that I'm looking into and stuff like that. Eventually, like, that's where I'll be heading off into because I think it'll make it easier also for me to, like, eventually, like, go back to school and do other things like that, so. This one's also a Black Maranta, but I never, like, it's, like, it's the, the mother. Like, after I split off all the other ones because it was huge, it just reverted back and like now it's like putting off these i don't know if you can see but there's like these little like brown points in there now you gotta clean that put these back up here That looks so much better. So I have some new plants that I acquired from another um, group admin that I'm with in a, in a Facebook group. <clears throat> and so she brought me over a couple of these fun new plants. This is the Deshidia. How cool is that, right? Some fun terrarium plants to add to the terrarium. And then also this little prop box filled with um, 
string of hearts in it. Super cute. Um, oops, this one's are, they're already rooting. But what I'm gonna do in here is um, I'm gonna try to like put other like cuttings in here and stuff like that. Like that need like high humidity. She said that she didn't open them until today, just to kind of like make sure that they're like rooting. So this is fun. I like that. These are like the little string of hearts. How cute is that? Love that. But I also have a whole bunch of plants. So this is one that I need to like put on a pole on uh because I make I make uh moss poles also. I like my moss poles a bit more like um on the more minimalistic side of aesthetics. So I this is what I mean. I like making my moss poles like this. So as you can see, they're just, they're clear with moss inside of it. And then they grow well. I use uh, Hugo's, uh, what is it, Amazing Tape? Incredible Tape? You can find it on Amazon. I did a video on how I make my moss poles, I think a while back. But if y'all like, I'll make another one and stuff. We can like go live and I'll make them, you know, live with y'all if y'all want to like. Need, need like a little background noise or something like that. But this this is what I'll be putting on to here. So that way they like start to like actually finish right. Cause if not, if this one, the Obliqua Peru, if you don't put it on a boss pole, it won't, it won't like uh, push off any foliage, which is just awful. But I really want to just like cut this piece But I'm gonna wait. I feel like that one's not such a big like seller in my shop. And usually when people are looking for that, they're wanting to trade with it, trade with me with for that. So I will just like cut it whenever people want to trade or something like that. This is oh, she also brought me these. Look at that. These are so cute. I'm gonna cut this off. Okay, but these are so cute. These are like two different types of begonias. How cute is that? So I'm super excited to, uh, I'm thrilled to uh, eventually like really start my begonia collection in my terrarium. I wonder if I could place this in here. <laughs> this will be my first experiment. Leave it like that. See if that works, and then we're gonna close it. So it's barely like touching. Can y'all see that? As you can see, it's just barely touching the the substrate. As you can see, it's like barely touching the substrate. You want to make sure that the um, the um what should we call it you want to make sure that the veins are touching the substrate and it's not fully like damped inside of it and if you see like the top part of it starting to rot away uh leave it the way it is leave it the way it is but take it take off the the lid and that's what i think i'll probably end up doing so we'll see but look at this this is the hoya comingiana uh, Varigata. How cool is this? This is one of my favorite uh, Hoyas at the moment. I really like this one a lot. This one's like one of my favorite right now. It's so dainty and small, but the leaves, look how big they get. <laughs> they go from really tiny to like really big. So we're going to propagate this. I really am excited to like actually just make more for the store because I know you all really like it. These are other Hoyas that we'll be propagating along the way. So I like to go all the way up to... I want to use this. Let's 
So, go like right here. Look at that, that's a nice big piece. But what I like doing is, I wanna make two, three, so we'll come from here. Come from here. That way it's like two, like, like that. A nice good cutting. Another single cutting, which would be great. And then you have your top, top cutting on the top. So this way you have different types of uh, Hoyas to grow and then uh, like eventually sell on your shop if you want to like this is how my method is so that way I have like two different types so that way I can afford that way I can, I can like offer um, two different types of like set prices for my shop and it all helps out because it all just like goes back to like you know reinvesting and doing things like that so and you just like kind of like learn along the way as you grow and do your thing you know This one, I've been really excited to finally propagate. This one is uh, the uh, Emplacelum Silver Streak. I've <laughs> been wanting one of these to add to the shop for a while. So we're just gonna like really go all the way down to like almost the base of it to really like get a good amount. It was laggy anyways, it needs to get cut. <laughs> That's my, my theory on it, my way to go about it. So now we just want to cut here. Because this way there'll be, uh, this will like grow off a good set of leaves. And then over here, as you see, there's like nodes right here. This is a node. You want to like cut in between that, but since it's really close, you might want to do up here. Now, as you see, there's like a good, this is your good top cutting of your, of your plant. And then you have like a mid cut right here. And then the new growth will emerge from this right in, in between this like petiole and uh, stem. So there's like a new growth point inside it here in this little petiole section. This is the node right here, as you see. You have another node here. It's always good to have multiple nodes because that will ensure the like the growth of it so if you are having trouble with a plant that you're propagating try to go with something that has like multiple nodes that way you can like build on how to like propagate along the way and then also remember like those books that i was showing y'all like to look into like actually like purchasing or like finding out or um just like saving as much of those type of resources on places that you can like actually like look at and then um learn throughout that way because like knowledge is knowledge is power and the more you know the easier it gets that's the best way i could say it like i like being able to now just like not have this like feeling like i am going to kill a plant because i don't know how to propagate it or i don't know how to care for it now you as you see like i have i have i have grown like various types of plants different types of species you know and so that way it also helps me like understand how different plants um grow and how i can care for them 
My favorites are Hoya because you really don't have to do a lot and you just get such great amazing results. This one's my Hoya Lock Eye. Look how beautiful that is. Uh... This one makes me so happy. I have to show y'all this one so much. Look at it. Oh, it just brings such a big smile to my face. Look how beautiful it is. So this one is a Hoya Lakudosa Mint Coin. How beautiful is that, right? Very silvery, nice foliage. It looks like the foliage is getting a little bit larger and um, that's what I like about it. it. Looks really like, really nice. All right. Ugh. It's so little now. Okay. What do y'all think? I think this one's really cool. I like it. It's one of my favorites that I have. One. I have propagated this one before, but I didn't like, it died on me. So I just waited again. So, so glad I did. This one's also super tiny. I hope it like, I hope it, it like, it grows. This one's a Lacunosa SP Jawa Moret. I'll put the name on the screen also so that way y'all can see it yourselves. Look how pretty that is. It was super, I think it's super pretty. I like dainty little Hoyos like this sometimes. Not all the times, but sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I just get scared they're gonna like die on me or something. Oops. Okay. So I just cut that little piece off and then we'll root it out because it's too... Oh, it has like pretty good nose, so we'll, put it, we'll just like do that. Maybe one more? No, we'll leave that there. That should be fine. Oh, yeah, Loki, I forgot to cut this one, y'all. I started rambling off so much. Sweet. Very sweet. Look at that. This is a nice cutting. I hope y'all like this one. Because I like it. Also, what are some Hoyas y'all think that I should start like looking into? I have a whole bunch of wishlist Hoyas. Should I do a video on it and just be like, this is my wishlist Hoyas? And so like that way everybody can see like what I'm super into and stuff because there's so many cool Hoyas out there. Alright, did I get enough? Yes. Yeah. I got some Amplissimum, Silver Streaks that'll be growing out, some uh, Hoya Ver Comigiana Vergadas. They'll be eventually be added to my shop. Um, Hoya Lacanosa Mint. Y'all know like my shop, I like to like kind of like get them semi-rooted and then we're well established. Some are, some of them have to be well established in order for me to sell them to y'all because they don't do well with people. Most people like when they're semi-rooted, so I have to, they have to be like well established. So the ones that are semi-rooted are because I know that, you know, people can like uh, adjust them to their like home space and stuff like that. So next we have to do my, the, the Tamurian, that's right. We have to do that because that's... All right, this is the Begonia Terrarium. This will probably be a fast paced one. But uh, I need to uh, grow this out. Look at all these cool Begonias in here. Like some really nice ones. So here's the Begonias. Some really good, cool one in here. I have um, this one is the Begonia Liberciae. Very cool. 
the white stuff in here is uh, soul for power. I wanted to do that before um, placing them all in there. This is the begonia with like coochie. <laughs> This is the Begonia Berkelii. Silver Edge. So as you see, Begonias are... Um... Oh, Begonias are asexual. So they reproduce from their own... Uh... From, their, from their own cells. I don't think this one's gonna make it. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think it's gonna make it. This one was another Berkelii Silver Edge, but it did make it. This one's really pretty. This one's like a U173 or something like that. This one, oh, this might be going to Amphioxus. I haven't planted it, but it needs to go in there. This is my begonia, um, Don Miller. Look at that, so pretty. Oh, which one was this one? Begonia, duh, 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 duh. oh, begonia Morocco. There's another begonia, Don Miller. Oh, I got a begonia beef steak. So excited. They're like leathery. Here's another one. I gotta repot those out. This one is a sisis this color. Oh, here's another <laughs> begonia silver edge. Oh, here it is. Begonia U163. That's the... This is the parent. We gotta make some cuttings also from here before I plant these in here. Here's another Begonia with the coochie. It's just a little, like, one that I was trying to root in there. I have no idea what this is. It's just... I, I Cane Begonia. But very pretty. So first, I need to wipe all this down. There we go. Now that it's clean, we can start adding the Lekka. Now I gotta see how to place these. Something like this would be good. And then, yeah, this one too. Thank you. 
What I try to do is um, I can make a hole where it's going to go um, and then I Sorry, I had to, I had to get that one. Uh, and then I uh, place it in there. That way it sustain, like it holds itself up.
All right. All right, later. This is the soil I use. It's the Fox Farm Ocean. I like using that because it just has all the good like nutrients in it and I've seen such great results from it from using that. By the way, not sponsored, I have to say that. Um, but if they ever want to, you know, I'd love, love to get sponsored by Fox Farm. That would be really cool. Unfortunately, a lot of companies don't like to sponsor a lot of YouTubers because, well, you know, a lot of YouTubers have had a lot of controversies in the past. Some that have carried it for MySpace. <laughs> Y'all all know who they are. But I'm just kind of like glad those people are kind of getting out the way because they really did like ruin a lot of things for the YouTube community and had to do a lot of things in order to like regain our image and stuff like that like I hate whenever someone like compares me to some one of those people because it's like oh well, you do you, YouTube you know like well you don't know about your past and stuff like that and I just get I hate when that happens but that's just how some people are it's not one thing it's another But it's like, I guess anything, right? Like there's always gonna be like those kind of people that ruin it for a lot of people.
I've always wondered, do y'all ever think that like MySpace will ever like get popular again? Like, do y'all ever think that people will, like be back into that? Just cause like some people get so tired of like how social media is now and like how MySpace has stayed, this, I guess not kind of the same. They stayed somewhat similar, but they just kind of like now um, are for like music and artists. But what if they like went back to like that style again? I think if they did, they would do they would do a lot better than Facebook is doing right now. That's just my opinion. That's it's, and also because of like just the way it's like set up and how nostalgic everybody is about the older times. Like it's wild. But those are just my unpopular opinions, of course. You know. That's just how it is. Really cool. Now this is how it looks, y'all. What y'all think? How exciting does this look? Ta-da! And I'll just go right in here. And now every time I propagate begonias, they're gonna go in here. Wow, so much easier. Pop these back up. All the little cutting that I took.
This one looks like a butterfly. <laughs> Which reminds me of the Kiki Palmer interview when she was talking about her about the worst photo shoot she was on and how <laughs> the one that she hated the most was the one with the butterflies all over her. She's like, yeah, it's the one I hated the most because they were all like peeing on me. They were all it was just I was like, oh girl, that's 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 some dedication right there. <laughs> Love Kiki Palmer. The things that they do, the things that they're made to do. Yeah, Roomba. Just out here. La Bercii, La Bercii, La Bercii, That's what you are. You are a La Bercii. the end of the video thank you all so much for joining me today on my daily plant care with my plants and just like and just organize with you all and then just hang out um like i said i like to just hang out chat talk and then uh show y'all like my plants and i hope y'all enjoy that i hope y'all have a great day i'll take care out there bye everyone remember always be true to yourself bye